हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल ऑफ विजनरी क्लासेस माय सेल्फ कल्याण बिस्वाल आई एम ए रिसर्च स्कॉलर फ्रॉम जे टुडे आई एम टीचिंग यू ऑन द टॉपिक दैट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एटमॉस्फेयर एंड कंपोजिशन ऑफ एटमॉस्फेयर सो बिफोर दैट आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल एंड कॉन्टैक्ट अस फॉर द लेटेस्ट स्टडी मेटेरियल एंड join our regular online classes so what is structure of atmosphere structure of atmosphere basically we are dealing with the layers of the atmosphere in atmosphere is separated into different kinds of layer based on the atmospheric pressure and the temperature profile 99% of the total weight of the atmosphere is lies within the 32 km so as we can see this is the place where 99% of the atmospheric weight is lies here because this layer is full of air mass and this reason only have the high density of air as we go up the altitude we can also see that temperature is decreasing in the troposphere then increasing in the stratosphere then again decreasing in the mesosphere and again increasing in the thermosphere this is due to the different kind of phenomena that is occurring in the each layer so here we can see the temperature is decreasing with the altitude in the troposphere that means this region having the high convective phenomena which is showing the positive lapse rate while this region of stratosphere do not show any convective phenomena and it is not showing that positive lapse rate while it is showing that negative lapse rate while in mesosphere again we are saying there is a convective phenomena that leads to the formation of positive lapse rate then again in the thermosphere we are saying that there is a negative lapse rate so what happens here that density of air and pressure decreases with the altitude in the vertical section of the atmosphere moving on to the first layer that is troposphere we are seeing it is lies between 0 to 12 km and the temperature here is 15 degree celsius to minus 15 degree 55 degree celsius so 80% of the total mass that is containing all kind of water vapor and dust particles can be found here the troposphere is mainly heated by the radiative energy from the earth surface this is a very very important point that the incoming solar radiation is not heating as much as the troposphere then it is heated by the long wave radiations that in being generated by the surface of earth and radiated back to the atmosphere so we should remember that the radiated energy from the surface of earth is the only process that is mainly responsible for heating of our troposphere then decrease in the temperature occurs with the increase in the altitude with a lapse rate of 6.5 degree celsius per 1 km this is the environmental lapse rate that is found all around the troposphere the troposphere is mainly divided into two parts the first part is called as the planetary boundary layer while the second part is the so what do we know about the planetary boundary layer let's study also the planetary boundary layer called as the atmospheric boundary layer why it is so it is also called as peplosphere peplosphere which is directly influenced by its contact with the planetary surface why does it is called as the atmospheric boundary layer because all kinds of atmospheric phenomena weather this kind of things happen mainly within the planetary boundary layer so this is therefore called as the atmospheric boundary layer also this is in contact with the surface of our earth so we are getting here mainly the winds that is being affected by the drag force what is drag force drag force is the friction force that is present in the planetary boundary layer due to surface roughness on our earth because we can see here there is a mountain here there is a flat surface so this will show different kind of frictions to the wind 
as we move height of pvl is mainly affected by the convection in this region so according to the height of the pvl that will be determined by the different kind of topography like here there is a mountain here there is a flat surface so it depends on how the mountain convective process takes place how the land convective process takes place convection means the transfer of heat through the process of the convection okay so what does it happens that uh, here the mountain shows a different kind of convective process while the land shows a different kind of convective process while sea so a different kind of convective process so on that basis we will determine where our planetary boundary layer is lying so above the planetary boundary layer we can see there is a free atmosphere which is not affected by the surface feature so above the pvl we will not see much amount of drag force which will affect which is affecting the wind so the second thing that we'll know in the troposphere is the tropopause this is a junction layer between the earth's troposphere and stratosphere it lies around 17 km above the equatorial region and 9 km above the pole why this is so because the equatorial region is getting too much of solar radiation and it shows high convective process as compared to the pole there is a low convective process which shows only 9 km height of the tropopause air also seizes here and cools here and become more dry here okay here the environmental lapse rate is suddenly changing from a positive to negative with the beginning of the stratosphere as we can see the troposphere has a positive lapse rate while the stratosphere has a negative lapse rate so there is a change in the lapse rate tendency while we move from the troposphere to stratosphere so the second most important layer is the stratosphere here the temperature lies between minus 50 degrees 6 degrees celsius to minus 2 degrees celsius so what happens here the temperature is getting halted at a, about 50 kilometer and above the ground where an inverse layer inversion layer exists with the increase of temperature with respect to height this layer is called as the troposphere so what basically happens here the temperature is rising slowly slowly up to the height of the upper boundary of stratosphere so why this is happening because in stratosphere the temperature is relatively high due to absorbance of uv radiations that is coming from the sun by the ozone molecules that is present within this band of 210 to 290 nanometer 19 percent of the total mass of the atmosphere is within the our stratosphere so uh, now we will study something about the stratosphere that what kind of layer it is so it is a highly stable layer or stratified layer and the mixing is very weak here therefore it is highly suitable for the aircraft movement as we can see aircraft is possible to move here while a weather balloons are also able to move here but sometimes if there is a volcanic eruption and some volcanic particles tree pass the tropopause and move to the stratosphere it will be there for a long time without being discarded from the stratosphere here this is a phenomena that we can see the stratosphere now moving on to the very important topic that comes in the exam that is polar stratospheric cloud that is present in the stratosphere here we can see there are two kind of phenomena one is without polar stratospheric cloud and second one is with polar stratospheric cloud so what happens when there is no polar stratospheric cloud and what happens when there is a polar stratospheric cloud actually ozone depletion takes place only in a gaseous phase or homogeneous chemistry kind of process occurs when there is no psc present that is no polar stratospheric cloud present as we can see ozone molecule present here directly reacts with the uv and give rise to chlorine monoxide nitrate and thus 
chlorine also reacts with CH4 and gives rise to HCl while in the presence of the polar stratospheric cloud that is around at minus 78 degrees Celsius where the polar stratospheric cloud forms what happens the presence of reservoir of HCl and chlorine nitrates reacts with the each other and liberates the Cl chlorine dioxide molecule which is photolyzed by the sunlight and produces the elementary chlorine atom and which performs a fast reaction with the ozone as we can see that chlorine is distributed into elementary car chlorine here then that chlorine reacts with the ozone and forms the chlorine monoxide which is called as the active chlorine so this process actually favors the more destruction of ozone as compared to the first process the presence of polar stratospheric cloud leads to more amount of ozone depletion so this is not good for the presence of ozone moving on to the next layer we can see there is a layer that is called mesosphere mesosphere is roughly present 50 to 60 kilometer above the surface of the earth the temperature decreases again with the increasing height as the air density is very low and the solar radiation is least absorbed here because and increasing cooling by co2 radiative emission also occurs here so what happens there is a lapse rate which is showing positive here so we are founding the coldest region on the earth atmosphere that is present in the upper boundary of the end of our mesosphere that is mesopause so that is around minus 100 degree celsius or 101 minus 101 degree celsius so mesopause the gases density is very low that's why the molecules of gas are very very apart from each other which is leading to least absorbance of solar radiation in this region that is the main reason which cools this layer moving on to the next layer that is the ionosphere what happens in the ionosphere ionosphere is mainly ions and electrons enough to affect the propagation of radio waves in this region we saw that there is lots of radio waves coming present here for the communication purposes so what happens there are charged particles that are created by the action of terrestrial radiation in this region it is roughly present above the 80 kilometer of height ionosphere is thought to be composed of distinct types of layers that is subdivided into d layer e layer and f layer so moving on to the detailed explanation of and f okay so we can see the first layer that we encounter in the ionosphere is the d region which is present at about of 60 to 90 kilometer of high it is sustained by a radiations coming from the sun and the level of ionization falls rapidly at the dust time the dust time means the evening time and it at it also attenuates the signal as it transmits the radio waves from it so what happens to the next layer that is e layer or e region that is above the d region it exists at an altitude above the 100 to 125 kilometer this layer is chiefly refracts them and often to a degree where they return back to the earth okay so e layer basically what happens this layer refracts while d layer what happens it attenuates so e layer is composed of soft x-ray while the most important reason in the ionosphere for long distance transmission of communication is also called as the f layer okay so during the daytime when the radiation is being high the f layer splits into f1 and f2 the difference between f1 f2 is the composition of f1 f2 the first one consists of the extreme uv rays while the second one 
contains only UV. Okay, so while in night, these two layers combine and it collectively shows the F layer. The density of air is very less, so it only reflects back the radio waves that are subjected to low level of attenuation. What is attenuation? The loss of signal that it takes place while it moves from one place to another. The last layer that we are studying here, that is the exosphere, that is the upper part of the thermosphere region, which extends up to a vertical distance of 550 km to thousands of km. Air is very thin here, but very suitable for the satellite orbit. So here is the layer where the satellite orbits. But the last layer that we can see outer space of the Earth, that is the magnetosphere. So Earth's magnetic field found here. It begins at a height of 1000 km, made of positive charges like protons and negative charges like electron. Due to solar flare, the particle collisions were frequent that leads to a phenomena that is called aurora borealis. So magnetosphere is very very important layer because it consists of Earth's magnetic field and it is mostly affected by the solar flare that is coming from our sun which leads to formation of aurora. Last layer, lastly, we can see that the composition of atmosphere divides the atmosphere into two kind of layer. That first layer is homosphere and the second layer is heterosphere. So what is homosphere and what is heterosphere? Let's just study that. The surface-based homosphere includes the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and lowest part of the thermosphere where the chemical composition of atmosphere does not depend on the molecular weight while there is a turbulent mixing in this region and relatively constant is the region while we move to heterosphere we can see this layer is having stratification according to the molecular weight of the ion as we know that nitrogen and oxygen are heavier molecules so it lies just below the heterosphere while oxygen is oxygen monoatom is like lesser weight than nitrogen oxide and oxygen dioxide so that lies above it then helium then hydrogen so you can see with the increase of our weight the elements were separated while in homosphere there is no such separation occurs so what do we need to understand from here that that constant gas that are present in our atmosphere are nitrogen, oxygen and argon. Nitrogen is about 78%, oxygen is about 21% and argon is about 0.9% that is present in our atmosphere and these are called constant gas because it does not vary with the time while there is a variable gas present in our atmosphere that is co2 okay but the highly variable gas that we can see in our atmosphere that is the water vapor that varies with the place time and everywhere on the surface of earth